So hi, this is Guy Kawasaki, and I'm sitting in rainy Silicon Valley where the weather is not perfect. One day. <laughs> and uh, we have Peggy Fitzpatrick in Key New Hampshire, social media capital of the world. And Gary Vaynerchuk, are you in New York? I'm in New York City, my man. Yep, and Gary Vaynerchuk's in New York, and today's uh, influencers, art of social media, VIP, total awesome webinar, hangout on air with Gary <laughs> Gary, Gary, Peggy, and I, we practice all week how to swear so we could fit right in with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I have, like, some big strings of them that my husband helped me with. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> So Gary, why don't you uh, you know kick it off here? Tell us what you're doing. Talk about your latest book. Whatever you're up to. So these days, I'll, I'll share with you. I'll kind of even like go a little improv here. These days, I'm very focused on running what you see back here, which is a 450 person agency called Vayner Media. Uh huh. Um and basically, you know, you guys know me. I mean, obviously, I wrote Jab 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 Right Hook last year. And obviously, I'm out there speaking and putting myself out there at times. But the last 24 to 36 months have really been more operational and execution. You know, really the guy and the human being I was from, let's call it age 22 to 30 before I ever even made my first Wine Library TV video, or guy, the guy that you ran into when you were sitting in the audience in Las Vegas in those early conferences. And, you know, like that was really 35 year old me. So I kind of wanted for myself and maybe even to be very transparent for, to, for the market to remind everybody that I'm an operator. I take a lot of pride that in the last 36 months, I've grown a company from 30 to 470 people. Um, and and so these days I'm I'm being the CEO of a, a you know of a top flight social digital agency. I'm also in January uh, raised 25 million dollars to continue my angel investing a little bit more formally in in a in a fund called Vayner RSC and that's doing really well and well as in. The, the companies haven't gone out of business yet. Uh, <laughs> That's a start. That's a start. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and my public stuff, you know, it takes the leverage of the relationship that you and I have, ga Guy, to be honest with you, to like drag me into things like this, though that was my core, you know, 48 months ago. Um, and so I'm really, really, I'm operational. I'm actually quite boring and practical, other than I got itchy because, you know, I love the camera. And so, uh, a few months ago, I started the Ask Gary V show, which is a, 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 a two or three time a week YouTube show and podcast where I take questions from Twitter and I answer four or five questions in a seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven minute video, very similar to Wine Library TV, and I'm enjoying it tremendously. And it's fun to be in tune with my community and find new people to get into the community. And so that's kind of my state of the union. So you're telling me you're growing up. I think that's right, but I also am telling you, I, I, but you know what, guy, to, to my defense and for me, Nappy, I, I think that I'm, I'm reminding people who I was before people thought I wasn't grown up. Uh, mm. So it's back to the future. Back to the future. <laughs> but Gary, you've always been about it, a business model. You've never been the social person that's just, I mean, you are social on live all the time, but it's always been about making money for the wine business or for... You know, it's not just a game, right? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I think people bet on their strengths. I mean, as people who are watching right now, the ones that have gotten to know me in real life, they, they, it doesn't take a long while to know that the shtick on stage or the persona on Twitter maps very similar to who I am in life. In life. I really genuinely like people. It's why I like, I mean, I'm like the head of HR of this 450 person company. I like talking about like people's conflicts. I like people. And so, for sure, social it works for me because it's in me, but equally to being someone who likes to be talking to or talking to people or with or in the game, I equally love building businesses and being a businessman. And so I'm not, you know, I'm not Mother Teresa. I've never, I'm not, I'm not you know, doing social because, you know, I think it's going to solve the world's problems. My, my filter to the world is very business oriented. Um, it, you know, I got involved deeper in tech, and which was the Web 2.0 movement that moved to social media era because I thought it would help my wine business. I started recognizing that I was able to see trends maybe slightly earlier than others, and there was financial ways through the, whether investing or, 
or consulting or building my brand or selling books or speaking, that there was other ways for me to play. And so that's exactly right. That, that's why I've never struggled with the, the you know, kind of cliche, what's the ROI of social media questions? Right. Because I've been feeling the effects, whether on my personal brand, which is the cliche way, so I take that out of the equation. I feel it um, in my wine business. I watch the conversion funnels of watching people come from Pinterest and buy $8,000 worth of wine or from a tweet. Like I know what the math is and the agency has allowed me across 100 clients to see it in different versions in verticals that I didn't play in. You know, I'm absolutely businessman first and and this stuff, I you know, if you really look at it, I've never spent much time debating the ROI of social media. I talk about it, uh, but to debate it is a waste of time because it's a foregone conclusion. I you know, a guy obviously has been in the game longer than I did, but you know, it, before I was known, I was arguing the value of e-commerce specifically when it got to wine. I mean, people just thought that was ludicrous in 1995, six and seven. And so, this is just much of the same. Back to guys, but guys, fun comment of like, you're growing up. Like, you know, for me, it's I think I'm always going to be in a seesaw moment, right? I'm I'm conflicted by my practicality and operation skills with the fact that I love the hyperbole and the personal brand and those things. And I think I'll go through these three to seven year chapters where I'll be a little more practical to remind myself that I'm worthy to get away with you know, speaking or public or a TV show or whatever happens in my life. I think there is a little bit of a yin and yang, a little contradiction, but I feel like they pull very strong and, and create something nice. Cool. Nice answer, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I heard a great quote that you said that it's hustling is squeezing every ounce of juice out of the orange, and that is 100% what I do. Like any piece of content that I create, I literally will squeeze like every single thing. I will make it into every form of content Smart. that I possibly can. So it's, some, I, it's something that I haven't historically been good at. Mm. Something I envy, and I think Guy's done a lot of scalable smart stuff in that. I know that you, you jam that way. Recently, very recent. As a matter of fact, very quick little secret. The Ask Gary V show is actually the strategy behind that. By mm. answering five questions and now building a content team around me, I'm turning them into Medium posts and LinkedIn posts. And yeah. if you go to GaryVaynerchuk.com right now, you'll start seeing BuzzFeed and Business Insider type of, like I'm literally turning myself into Mashable and Forbes by building a team around me. I was too, very honestly, busy like with the wine business or VaynerMedia to do a good job in taking a piece of content and making it further than just a tweet, turning it into a quote card to be good on Pinterest, then turning it into an animated GIF uh, for Tumblr. And I think, but I think there is enormous value in that peg mm -hmm. if you can either afford it or, you know, financially or have the time to really go into it. Back in, oh, for example, I'm sad that Wine Library TV wasn't popping now. I know so much more how to make it successful, not just the show, chop it up into episodes for each individual wine, write articles about it, get them distributed by Wine Spectator. There's 17 to 25 moves in my tool shed today that I didn't use to build up that profile. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think one of the biggest ones is the what I call the DJing of content, right? Taking a core thought or a piece of content and then making them consumable you know, how do I take that same picture and then put it on Snapchat and then draw a funny thing on top of me because I'm talking natively within that platform? That's, I mean, that's what the book was about. Yeah. You know, and and I think even you know, I only wrote it a year ago. I think that is this one. Yeah, and so that's exactly what I believe in, Peg, as you as you know, because that's two years of thoughts ago and mm. you know, and a year and a half of the book being out. But it's scary to me how much better at that exact game and more knowledge and more things I have to say. Um, about that subject because I do think that content is king but the context of the platform that the content is being delivered on is a nuance that is separating you know the women from the girls. You got it. How, so, many, how many people so, watch one of your Gary V you know ask Gary videos? I think the view count right now guys is, is you know somewhere between 20 and 35,000 per episode. You know, I don't know how many unique people, I don't know if somebody's watching it six or seven times, you know, but yeah. those, those are the view counts. And yeah, and to be honest with you, I've spent a little less time, Guy, in the last 24, 36 months to try to be at the tippy top of my audience, you know, engagement. Mm -hmm. So I'm building myself back up even in a little way. I mean, you know how it is as being somebody who's 
one of these individuals that has a lot of people's attentions. There's an ebb and flow of sometimes when you're like on, when a book's out, or you know, like when we're on. It, it's kind of like being an artist that goes on tour, right? Yeah. Sometimes you go back to the lab and you work on the songs. Sometimes you're promoting. So it, you know, I see a lot of parallels to that, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and so that's what we see. Okay. So let me ask you this now that it's been a while since your book's been out. Do you love Pinterest more because you you didn't really love Pinterest all that much? It kind of broke my heart a little bit. Peg, you know what? It, it wasn't that I didn't <laughs> love Pinterest in that book. I, I mean, I love Pinterest. It was that I didn't feel like I had enough to contribute at that moment. Yeah. I was deeper in other places. I yeah. knew the value was there. I wasn't... I didn't feel like I had enough expertise to go deep enough, and you know, I you know, I like betting on my strengths, right? Like I didn't yeah. even, I mean, I didn't even talk about YouTube, for example. Yeah. In that book because I felt Crush It handled that. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a long time, and you can go back to talks five years ago about my POV on Pinterest, which is I think when Pinterest's ad product in 2015 really gets to scale, it is going to be a major league competitor of Google search ad money because the conversion rates and the intent of the audience to buy things on that channel are extraordinary. Mm. So, you know, please let me apologize for the tone that you <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where's the Pinterest? There were, you know, it, all that came down to was of the moment when I, when I did that work, yeah. I just didn't have enough depth to make that chapter as oomphy as it could be, but yeah. it wasn't it wasn't my love for it. It was yeah. just my own skill set that I thought I could deliver on in that book. I, I'm just giving you a hard time. I, 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 ex I explain Pinterest to, gear, to, but you um, know, to Guy all the time. He's like, you know, what? <laughs> you know what? The reason I wanted to answer it that way is I think it's an important note. I think that one thing that I think a lot of people who've been fortunate enough to get people's attention, the fact that we're fortunate right, enough right now that some people want to watch this, I think there's a pressure to be all things to everybody all the time, that you're this unbelievable, you, you know, and I, I think the reason I've been able to, for whatever people handle the way I act on stage or things of that nature, when people peel away, you know, the layers with me, the thing that I take a lot of pride in is by staying in the zone and talking about the things that I know, it's allowed me to be less full of shit <laughs> then the sizzle that I naturally come with to begin with starts the process down and that in a weird way has been my saving grace and I think it's important for a lot of people watching here is stay in your zones of the things you really know. Don't feel the pressure to be the biggest expert on Yik Yak right now if you haven't even downloaded the app. Mm -hmm. It took you 16 minutes before you said your first profane word, Gary. I mean, you are getting old. <laughs> 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 So, Guy, you want to shoot a question? Uh, I'm like, you know, I'm just so amazed. I'm wrapping my mind around this 35,000 views of his YouTube videos. Maybe well, we do an Ask Guy series, huh? Hey, yeah, by the way, by the way, Guy, did, did I email you on this? One of the big things I'm doing for the show is I'm getting people to ask a video question. Uh -huh. um, and, and very honestly, like, to make it very clear, it is a branding game. And so I'd love for you to ask a question you guys, if you want to ask a question for the show, and it could bring a lot of exposure to what you're doing here, um, I've got a lot of fun people lined up, and it's just a fun thing for my audience. So, uh, yeah. tell me how to do it. How do I do it? Just record a 30-second question for me of any sorts that you want, okay. um, and then I'll play it as one of the five questions on the show. And awesome. I mean, just do it on a, just do it with video on a phone, and send you the video. Mm -hmm. Or how? I mean, if you want to use higher quality, that's fine. But video on phones are so high quality at this point. I'm more than comfortable with that. Okay, we'll do that. Cool. Awesome. So, Gary, have you um, experimented with native video uploading to Facebook? Yes. It's, um, ma it's magic for 2015. You're absolutely right, Peg. And, and Guy, the, the view count on my show would probably be closer to 50,000 if I wasn't so bullish on Facebook native video. And Peg, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's magic. I, I would, uh, I would uh, add some color to what you just said for the audience. It's magic for December 10th, 2014. Our intuition tells us it's going to be magic because it's obviously Facebook's own native product, so it's, I, I think it'll always be at some level in magic. But Facebook feed is very much this generation's Google, you know, native, like natural search results, right? Mm -hmm. They're always tweaking. I'll give you one. Medium, the blogging mm -hmm. platform, is magic for Facebook feed right now. I clearly see when I post a Medium article a higher 
awareness rate than I do if I do a LinkedIn post or things of that nature. So Facebook's always gonna play algorithmic games of what they think is most valuable to their platform. Yeah. Clearly, they wanna beat Google. They're not gonna let Google, you know, excuse me, YouTube videos that are natively posted in a feed get the or same organic reach that their native product is. Plus, exactly. the execution of their native product is incredible. You, you scroll, it starts playing, you have to hit it to hear the audio. It's so well done. Mm. And I've been, yes, I mean, guy, I've given up, and think about this, and you're gonna, this is gonna make a lot of sense to you and a lot of other people listening. I'm giving up the perception branding value of having my videos have 50,000 versus 35,000 mm -hmm. because I'm getting 50,000 to 100,000 native on Facebook and net net, though that's not a public number and though yeah. I can't say look at me, it's still achieving the bigger goal at hand. And so yes, Peg, to answer your question, I'm in, to me the arbitrages that are most valuable right now are native uh, video in Facebook feed, medium, mm -hmm posts in Facebook feed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think I think Instagram is incredibly important. It's hard to track the conversions, but the attention of the customer yeah. is clearly there. I think Twitter's going down, unfortunately, a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. the, the attention's waning, and mm -hmm. I think we're all feeling that. I've never been in a place where I'm posting the same thing so many times to still reach the se same level of awareness, and I have my concerns of, is that turning off the audience that is, is hardcore, that sees it four times. So those are some concerns of mine. I'm curious where they'll go. I think Pinterest is ad product. You know, there's a lot of fun, exciting things. You know, LinkedIn's influencer thing, as they mm. added everybody else, got deteriorated. So I'm moving, like, you know, it's just a constant move to where the they, art is. They have a lot of new stuff coming out, though, with their integration with SlideShare. Um, LinkedIn and SlideShare together are doing some more behind the scenes things with influencers. So it's going to be interesting. 2015 with um, Haiku Deck and SlideShare with LinkedIn is going to boost it back up where the publishing, when everybody got publishing, it did equal it out a little bit. I know what you mean. Like when, when just influencers had it, it was like special and then it was like a lot of content. And as one of those influencers, that's all I care about for me, right? So like yeah. I know and agree with you, like I have slide shares that have hundreds of thousands of consumption. I did that through LinkedIn and I know that's a tactic that will work. But from a branding standpoint, when there's that dilution, you have, you know, for all of us, and by the way, not only the ones that have been lucky enough to have the skill or the serendipity to pop out and be at a bigger level, but even for anybody watching here who's got an audience of 17, you've got to always audit your resources, whether they're financial or time, to where do you need to put out your storytelling, your content, your micro content, your efforts, and that to me is really the most fun game. And I take a lot of pride in spending outrageous amounts of time trying to figure out where to execute that. All right. Have you tried Canva, Gary? I have not. Oh, Gary, you're killing me. I know, guy. But I think I think me. Gary's. I oh think Gary's team, I think your team might use it, though, right, Gary? Yeah, guy. The team's using it, the and team and are big fans. Team. I'm just. I just would never want to bullshit you, and I know people are watching. But I promise you, with all my heart, I will. Okay. I've got a couple I, weeks vacation coming up, and I will definitely do it. I'm not gonna I, drink wine until you use Canva. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am gonna drink wine. <laughs> um, so, so Gary, um, speaking of Medium, I loved. I just saw that you published on there, and it was an article about your bucket list. Yes. Can you can you share that? That was an awesome piece. You know, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people hear the spiel of like, I want, I want to buy the New York Jets, and that's true. But I thought it was an opportunity for me to to uh, clarify that I love the process, right? And I talked about, you know, everybody's got these things they want to achieve and bucket list I thought was a good way to kind of put it because we, we kind of use that terminology in pop culture. You know, I, I always ask myself why am I so happy and I really, really am happy and I've been happy my whole life and it, whether it, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't start happening when I got more triple Z list or internet fame or more financial upside or it, it's just always been there because I once I got out of the school system, which was not happiness for me, right? I, I didn't want to play within those rules. Once I got into the land that was mine, entrepreneurship, I'm in love with the with the process of trying to be successful more than being successful. And so I kind of went into it, kind of talked about the things that matter to me, which is people, you know. Um, and you you know you know Peg, I appreciate you calling it out. It is my most over indexing. It's my second most over indexing piece on Medium. It hit, clearly hit a chord. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, and ironically, the other one was me talking about how valuable my wife is 
in the in the process of me being successful because she creates the air cover for me to draw within and execute within and you know guy once told me at an airport about his travel schedule predicated on his family and he may not remember this but it was in Turkey and it, and it was just in line we were just going through customs we weren't even really talking about much we were both trying to get to our next place and it and it hit me and it and it's always been with me ever since and uh, you know, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, your family is just so everything, and I and uh, and I, it's important to me for my behavior to map to my to the things I care about. But I also need to balance the natural ambition that is in my heart and the things that I want for me. Not you know, and that's part of it as well. And I think all of us, you know, play that game and try to figure out what's right for themselves. And it evolves. And my life's different today with a five-year-old and a two-year-old than it was five years ago. With or six years ago with neither in the equation, and I can already taste what it's going to feel like. You know, I'm projecting feelings of when they're 10 and 13 and doing more tangible things, and so you adjust. I, you know, uh, I was in Anaheim giving a talk, and I didn't know really where I was, and I realized Disneyland was one second away yeah. from where I was, and it was the first time in my life I like stopped and I said, oh my God, I can't wait to have to speak at this venue again because I'll I don't care if my daughter's in school or at camp or you know whatever she's doing I'm taking her and it's going to be an amazing two day trip one that I'll remember and hopefully she'll remember and so these are the things that it's funny to watch your life evolve and but while still being the same person and having the same aspirations and dreams and and hustle Gary I'll give you a power tip for when you when you do that Disneyland trip so Disneyland has um, invited me as a VIP or you know whatever right because of social media and so what they do now you can hire this person or they can assign it to you depending if you find the right social media person at Disney they assign this person who stays with you all day long and you literally cut every line yes <laughs> I, I have done like 14 to 20 rides in a day that's you know that's four or five times oh yeah five yeah. X yeah yeah, yeah. So Unbelievable. that's the power tip man it's Guy, it's unbelievable how shameless I will be in that execution. I have no, <laughs> no pride or sense of morality to cut lines ever. I, I'll tweet them, Gary. I'll tweet Disney so they know you're interested. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys, do you guys know that clear pass that they yeah. have? In a couple? When I use that, I, it's funny. You, you use this pass, you go in front of everybody who just wasted, like, they give you the buckets, they literally cut a person who's... Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 I, I have empathy, but I gotta be honest, I'm like, the time is so much more valuable than yeah. those two strangers. I feel bad, but I'll do it, because, and that's a similar scenario. I, yeah. I tell people that I'm Jackie Chan when I cut the line. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My, my kids are waiting for that guy. They're like, when will we be at the stage when Disney calls us and says, <laughs> will you come? And I'm like, ah, I don't know if that's gonna happen. So they're hoping to be Kawasaki. You're, you're working on it, Peg. Yeah, well, I'll pay for my trip, I guess, <laughs> the old-fashioned way. I mean, with money. <laughs> yeah. um, what do you see? You know, you obviously working with a lot of large brands. What do you see as the biggest mistakes they're making with social media? You know, I think I, first of all, they're not making the mental commitment, guy. Mm -hmm. Like they can say anything they want. They're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on social media and millions and tens of millions on billboards and radio and direct mail and print, mm -hmm. and then tens and hundreds of millions for television and things of that nature. I mean, th they're spending guerrilla marketing budgets <laughs> on social media. So that is absolutely the, the, the truth is that they haven't really bought into the religion or made the true, they, because they have a Facebook and Twitter account, they think they've made the commitment, but they're not making the financial or the mental commitment to try to extract the true ROI out of these platforms. So believe it or not, that's number one. I think number two, I think they're, you know, obviously I have vested interest in this statement, so I want to hedge it, but it's the truth, and I hope the people that know me take it for what it's worth. I think they're hiring the wrong partners. A, a lot of them are, are hiring very youthful, you know, they think because they grew up with it, they can do it. Or PR agencies who have been right. traditionally in the B2B business. Right. You know, if you think about a PR agency, they've worked with seven to 15 editors to try to get things or producers, whereas mm -hmm. social's the market. Um, so I, but I will say this, this was a pretty banner year. Uh, there's a lot more recognition to its realness. But again, Guy, 
uh, you know, and to put it into context of your career, because I think it's the right analogy, you've watched so many cycles of the things that people haven't believed in, right? Yeah. In technology for so long. They didn't believe in computers. Yeah. Right? I mean, right? <laughs> computers. They didn't believe in women. <laughs> right. Like, think about that. I mean, like, yeah. the evolution. Okay. Lots of people. Like, think of all the whole Mad Men generation. You see women. Yeah. Don't exactly yeah. 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 I know. Mad Men cracks me up. I so, love that show. So, so, I mean, and they definitely, for a lot of us watching here right now, we all remember when people truly did not believe in the internet. Yeah. Like, straight up. And yeah. I'm talking about, like, Microsoft as a company. I'm talking about <laughs> people saying it was going to be a fad. Like, literally a fad, like, 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 like rainbow bloom bracelets, like you know. <laughs> so, so I think I think that for me, much like email marketing or e-commerce or banner retargeting and the exchange or YouTube videos, when I kind of popped, nobody, you know, social's coming to real of age right now, um, and I'm excited about it. And then I think the other thing is, and it's why I didn't write. That's why I wrote the book, guy. I think most people don't understand that the context of the platform. Is uh, is very very important. You can't just take the same photo and blast it across nine different platforms and think it's gonna do you any good. Okay. <laughs> the guy's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think about it. Lots to think about it. Okay. The guy's like, okay. All right. So it's we were, about to explode. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we we are at the thirty minute mark. Do we want to uh, wrap it up here and uh, sure. well, guys? We're, any... we're gonna let Gary plug our book and tell everybody to read our book, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, so first of all, given the context, uh, you guys, for, for I'm, I'm telling you right now, guy, and this makes me super pumped. I, uh, I really want that video question for you, and I'll pound it really hard in an environment that will get you a lot of new audience, and I'll definitely do that because the truth is, here's what it comes down to, and if anybody's watching, here's the punchline to that statement by guy. I think all of us in the world, but definitely one who gets, you know, I, guy, guy, let me ask you a question. Let's flip it up. Guy, how many times do you get asked to give a quote to somebody's book a week? Once a day. There you go. Same for me. And so, and so, when time is my biggest asset, and when my name of who I'll spend time with or put that name on, I mean, I went three years not doing it to anybody, and I thought I went a little too far. And I said, okay, let's take a step back and like. But my fear is always, I don't know what's written in that book. If they say one thing about LinkedIn that I believe is different, am I associated by endorsing that statement? Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. level of confidence of your execution, guys, uh, allows me to be here. And there's no like, go buy the book or or mm -hmm. the Gary V, you know, charisma to get it going. <laughs> nothing, nothing will trump the fact that I want to be here right now and have this conversation with you guys, or ask you to ask a question on the show in the context of the book. Control, and, and I think that, I think, is what I spend the most time thinking about, that your word is and your name is your biggest asset, and I, I happily sit here in this room with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. All right, that's a, that's a super place to wrap it up. <laughs> so it is. Well, we, told, we told Gary half hour. I'm sticking to it. We don't want to you know, waste his time. And, 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 and I'll, 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 friend, go ahead. Gary, anybody, after, forget, about, forget about Go ahead, guy. After you buy the Jets, buy the Rangers, okay? <laughs> hockey team, you got it. Uh, Peg, like I see what, Peg, I see what you're doing, but instead of like throwing it up, and I, that's very sweet of you, you don't I need to put the book up. I'll say okay. this. Anybody who has any follow-up questions and details to this, Gary VEE -E on Twitter, hit me up, say hello. Um, bring value is the leverage I'm looking for for the moment yeah. when I want something in return. So right okay. now I don't need anything. Let me help. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.